everybody, welcome back. I'm Nate Moore, this is Excel Video 254. I've been helping a cardiology practice segregate all their billed charges into different volumes categories so they could do a dashboard and trend the different types of services they render over time. When you're ready to pull your data out of your PM system and see your trends, let's talk. Past couple of Excel videos, we played with relative cell references where both the row and the column component of the cell reference change. We play with absolute cell references where both the row and the column component of the cell reference don't move at all. Now what I want to play with is a mixed cell reference where one of the two components, maybe the row changes the cell of the cell and the column stays constant or vice versa. When would you use it? How would you use it? That's what we're going to talk about today. I'm going to scroll down here a bit. What I have here is future collections by specialty. And what I have here is for each of my collections, I have historical information for 2010 and 11 for each of these specialties in my multi-specialty practice. Now here's 12, 13, and 14. And for whatever reason, mainly to explain how mixed cell references work, I have different percentage increase or decrease that I see coming in these different categories, these different specialties in my business. And so what I've got going here is I know it's 2.1 million. And now watch, watch how this formula works and we'll extend it forward. What we're going to do is we're going to take C21 or last year's revenues and we're going to multiply it by 1 plus B21. Now the reason we're only locking in B, if we locked in the entire reference, well first let's copy it over so this works and so now this is D1 times 1 plus B21. Had we done this and the F4 key remembers the shortcut. If we'd locked in everything, then what would happen is, as we moved across, this would all be right, but as we copied down, notice how everybody is using the B21, the cardiology's percentage increase, decrease, instead of what we wanted for family practice or general surgery. So let's undo our way back one more. See, now we're locking in just column B. So now watch what happens when we copy down. I'm looking in column B. I continue to look in column B. I've locked in column B, but I'm going to let the rows move to row 22, to row 23, to row 24. We say, hey, Nate, what if I just, let's come back, oh, maybe one more. Let's copy this over. And instead of doing this, what if I just said, oh, I'll just use a relative cell reference. I'll just do B21. It's going to screw up like crazy over here because, see, now I've moved outside my column in column B and I'm in column C. See how I have to lock in column B to make sure when I copy this way I don't go to column C, D, E, and F. But I don't want to lock in row 21 because I, when I copy this way I want to make sure that we get the family practice percentage on this line. See how that's looking at B22. Radiology is looking at this line. That's on B24. Does that make sense? You have to lock in the column to make sure I always stay in this column even when I copy out to future columns. But I want the row to move so as I go down I get different specialties growth rates as I copy. Let's do one more. This is going the other direction now. Now I'm going to forecast future collections by location but my increase now changes by year. See here my increase was changing by specialty and really by row. Here it's changing by column. So when I come over here now I'm going to do 1 plus C. I'm going to let the columns move. I want it to, here I want to look at C, here I want to look at D, here I want to look at column E's growth rate. But I always want to lock in to row 30 so that when I copy all my formulas across, they work. And when I do this and copy everything this way, all my formulas work because let's just pick on this one. C36, prior year location, and then time 1 plus D30, and what's D30? It's the 2012 increase. And over here, I always want to make sure I'm going here, but I'm going to do 1 plus E30 because I'm using this column, but I don't want to change the rows because I always want to lock into this row because when I, when I copy that formula down, I always want to look at this increase for the respective column. Try a few and make sure that you're comfortable with locking in both where we don't want either the row or the column to move. See how we did the F4 key to lock in both of those? Here we're locking in just the column reference. Here we're locking in just the row reference. It's a powerful tool to be able to copy formulas all over your spreadsheet and make sure you're only referencing the cells you want to move. I hope that was helpful for you. Thanks for watching.